you join me here today at the fort of Magna Carvoran, one of the central sites in Hadrian's Wall. A Hadrian's Wall fort and a staying gate fort. Magna has a long history and a place that's pretty much unexcavated. When you're looking here across the green fields, it's hard to get an idea of just how big this place really was, but it's huge. Over 50 acres of landscape covered in Roman remains, all the way from Hadrian's Wall, just to the north of the site, and the Vallum, right the way to the fort, and its extensive town, which we can see in geophysical surveys, stretching all the way around the edge of the fort. This was a big, vibrant place in Roman times, and now it's completely hidden under the ground. In 1972, the Vindelander Trust purchased the old dairy farm here at Carvor and Magda, and they purchased it to try and protect this site from farming activities, but also to land bank this site for future work. Unfortunately, climate change started to impact that equation. We no longer can simply accept that if things are buried below the surface, they're protected, they're secure. So what's special about Magna? It's a pristine, preserved archeological environment that may hold some of the greatest answers to the big questions about Hadrian's Wall. It's a huge landscape, it's got all ranges of preservation here from waterlogged anaerobic to normal dry dirt archaeology. It's got a part of Hadrian's Wall, the Vallum, a Roman fort, a huge town preserved in this landscape and it had some of the most exotic units from Roman Britain, Syrian archers, Dalmatian mountain soldiers, to name just a few of the units that we know about. So this place here with its Vallum diversion, the only diversion of this big ditch that happens properly along the line of Hadrian's Wall is hiding something in the landscape that's been preserved for thousands of years. It's now under threat and it gives us an opportunity to learn as much as we can about this site, the people who lived here, but also to learn ways in which we can manage that threat and help to preserve this for future generations. And I'd like to talk to you today about how climate is changing and how that will likely impact our uh, heritage sites. In England, we have the longest temperature record in the world. We can see that temperatures early on in the record were colder, even as much as two degrees colder. And, and then over time, that temperature has gradually increased until we get to about 1990, and then we've got a, a sharp rise in, in temperatures. When we talk about a 1.5 degree warming um, of global temperatures, on the, the land surface, the warming is going to be much more extreme. So uh, that, that can be as much as several degrees. The climate predictions that we have are for the climate of these sites to get um, a bit wetter and rather warmer, and also for the seasonality um, of these sites to, to increase. In the summer, we're likely to see much greater um, frequency of convective thunderstorms and those types uh, of rainfall events can be really destructive uh, because we get lots of water being dumped on the landscape in very short concentrated amounts of time and that greatly increases the potential for uh, sites to be affected by uh, surface runoff and erosion. And we're already seeing some of those changes um, affecting the sites, particularly at Magna, um, where we're seeing big reductions in the area of peat bog on the site and all of those types of changes will see cascading into the future with potentially really big impacts on the archaeology. So I'm standing here in the field between the fort, which is behind me, and the Vallum and Hadrian's Wall over there. And this is normally a swamp or a bog or a peat bog. And I shouldn't in January be able to walk across this without sinking into the ground. But it's dried out. It's started to desiccate. And because of that, the ground level is dropping and Roman remains and features like this thing before me are rising out of the ground. These should be hidden, they should be protected, and they're not as this field starts to drop. And when that happens, bits of Roman masonry like this on this mound become exposed and then they are vulnerable to further erosion, further decay. And this is a Roman building that's starting to appear as the ground around me is dropping. And I'm quite a lot higher now than the field all the way around me. And this isn't just unique. You can see all around here, humps and bumps starting to appear in the fields. And every time that happens, Roman remains get close to the surface and they can be weathered and exposed, they can be knocked about and they can be damaged. And we start to potentially lose vital information that's been locked at this site, stored for thousands of years. Last summer, in August, one of the hottest summers on record, a team of scientists came out into this field 
and started the process of trying to work out what's going on under the ground here. We dug a series of boreholes to test the soil, to see what was the state of the remains and the preservation, but also chemically and biologically what was happening to that material. It's going to give us a really good indication of just how quickly climate change is affecting the archaeology of the World Heritage Site. This, this is uh, three curves in, in water level change from three of the boreholes, and you can see that the water level, the groundwater level, increased by half a meter at the tail end of these rainfall events. Half a meter is quite substantial. That is more um, than you would expect in a natural peat bog. Actually, a natural peat bog should sustain a uh, rather stable water level for peat mosses like sphagnum to thrive. If they lose contact with groundwater, then they'll die off. At Magna, we took five boreholes across the site. And once the cores came out of the ground, we transferred them to a minus 80 freezer at the National Horizon Center. This was to ensure that the microbial and biomarker information did not degrade and we preserved as much information as possible from those cores. Understanding the pH changes of that core and down the core will give us an indication of what's going on across that whole site. We dried those soils out. Dark samples are where the peat is. So we have higher total carbon, higher total nitrogen. And then as you see the colour change to a much lighter, even red sandy colour, that's when we experience the chemical changes. We look at core two, very low number of peat samples. If we look at core three, we've nearly got double the amount of peat samples. And that really indicates us the health of that peat difference between core two and core three. So here at Teesside, we extract DNA from the soils at Magna and look at the DNA, which is from all of the different living things, the microorganisms within the soil, and try and identify different signals within the DNA that allows us to tell us what microorganisms are there so that we can start to see what they might be doing. What we really want to do is understand the roles of the microbes within the soil in decomposition and preservation of the artefacts and also think about how they might be changing over time as a response to climate change and environmental changes within the site. So this is just the start of a long-term research project at this site, a long-term monitoring research project. A huge amount of work has taken place over the last six months. The scientific work, the analysis has started, the logging and maintaining records have started to work out what's going on in this landscape, this space. And as a result of this, we're gonna start testing this groundwater and looking at the environment here over the long term to plot and see what's happening and what changes are taking place so that we can come up with a strategy to manage what's going on and to try and help us to protect and curate this precious landscape, this important part of a World Heritage Site.